Hello, my name is Jimmy and welcome to the 2024 Toyota Tacoma. This is the TRD Sport with the six-speed manual. And I'm going to tell you right away that this is not the one that you want. I know everyone loves a manual. I know purists would be like, save the manuals, give me the manual. But the manual, it's just not the way. There's a lot of regulations and mission stuff and whatnot that makes this manual just horrible. It really, really is. Because when I accelerate and I clutch in, I mean, there's rev hang and then there's just revs staying at the exact same spot for like a good second and a half, two seconds. This is, this is absurd. It really is. But let's put that aside for now. Let's talk about the new Tacoma because, I mean, it's brand new. It's long awaited. Starting at about $50,000 or here as spec about 55,000 Canadian or 86,000 Canadian dollars for a trail hunter. Now, what I can say is at least Toyota gives you options, right? So you can get, well, two bed lengths. Most other manufacturers don't give you that option. So that's kind of cool but 86,000 Canadian dollars is a whole lot of money for not that big of a truck <laughs> of course for 2024 everything about it is new I mean it still looks like a Toyota though right it has that Toyota front end it looks kind of like a mini Tundra this being the TRD Sport I also get some body colored fenders which to be honest isn't really the same color as the body I understand they're different materials but this is pretty far off and the paint quality on those fender flares are horrible <laughs> just just get the other trims where you can get like plastic fenders or you know any other color because this this isn't all that color match it really isn't <laughs> out back I got LED tail lamps which actually makes sense I'm like the previous generation Tacoma, which actually was a split tail light. If you didn't know, the previous generation, only the brake light was like the bottom half and then the turn signal was the top half. So the entire C clamp that the tail light was, it, well, it didn't all light up. Now it does. So it makes sense. Of course, like I said, you got two bed options depending on what you choose. You can get the long bed or the short bed that I have here. In terms of cabin space, well, starting with the back seat, I'm 5'11". While I do have enough headroom, legroom is definitely not as much as you may want. My knees are just touching the front seat here when adjusted to me at 5'11". As this is the lower trim, there's not much back here. I don't get vents, I don't get USB ports. The only thing I get is a 12 volt socket in the center and then the cup holders on top, and that's really it. If you're thinking of carrying kiddos in here, well, I am a child passenger safety technician. And on the driver's side, well, this is a Kleckling infant seat. While I didn't really have any troubles putting the base in, I do have to say the doors themselves are not as wide as you might think. And because of that, sliding an infant carrier in is a little bit more tough than you might imagine. And you have to move the front seat forward a little. Even for me at 5'11", I have to shift it up a bit just so that I can fit the car seat in here. On the passenger side, this is a Kleck Fünf in rear facing. This is your typical rear facing seat. It takes up quite a bit more room than the infant seat. And because of that, definitely not that much space. As for forward facing seats, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. The headrests are removable and you do have the upper anchors just behind the bench. And you also get two sets of lower anchors just on the bottom. Those are all easily within reach. As for the front seats, as it is a TRD Sport, cloth seats with heated surfaces, which is fine. And in front of me, I do get a heated leather steering wheel, which doesn't really look all that leathery and doesn't feel all that leathery, but it's just a lower grade leather. So, I mean, it's fine. It's more rough and ready, right? <laughs> you do get a full digital cluster behind that. Personally, I don't mind a good set of analog gauges, but this is nice and it's decently customizable. You got themes, you got different gauge lookouts and whatnot. So you can adjust it to whatever you want and see all the information that you really need. No heads up display. 
And then the infotainment, as this is a lower trim, I get the smaller screen, which looks a little out of place with these huge borders on the side. But I do get wireless CarPlay, which is nice. And there's a dedicated volume knob. If you go with the higher trims, you do get a much bigger display and a bigger volume knob in the center of the vents. So a little bit different. I get a single zone climate control here that is fully automated. Press my auto button and it does its thing. And Qi wireless charger on the bottom and my four wheel drive controls on the bottom. Overall though, I mean, the interior is exactly what you expect out of a Tacoma. You get hard surfaces on the side, exactly like a truck should. You get Tacoma stamped right in front of the passenger side. It's what you expect. There's nothing that amazes me other than maybe the digital cluster. And that's really it. But it's a Tacoma. It's not supposed to surprise me in here. What is supposed to surprise is, well, the longevity of it. And well, the powertrain should be one of the stronger points because underneath the hood, it's a 2.4 liter four cylinder. It makes 270 horsepower, 310 pound feet of torque. If you get the upper hybrid trims, that bumps the power to 326 horsepower and 465 pound feet. And if you get the hybrid, you can't get it with the six speed, you get it with the eight speed automatic, which is actually more favorable. Let me explain. There's a lot of emission stuff that's going on. And because of that, this transmission just doesn't feel the best. There's a lot of rev hang. And when you're shifting through the gears, you have to shift like a truck. So you have to be slow and steady and you have to basically slip the clutch quite a bit for it to be a smooth shift. If you don't do that, well, things get quite bumpy and uncomfortable. Your shifts, they have to be very slow. Third, lift, shift, slowly release. If you don't do that, so for example, uh, no one behind me, I'm just gonna put it into third and then pop the clutch off. I hope that catches on audio, like it chirps the rear tires because of, well, the revs <laughs> every single time. <laughs> I don't dare to shift in the second because this is going to lock up the rear tires and I'm just spinning. I don't know. I, I'm afraid to do so without downshifting with proper, well, blipping, but you can't blip because if you, if you try to blip, you have to like, <laughs> You have to press the throttle for like a good second for the revs to catch up. Then you can go down. Like, I'm going to stay silent. Here, my third to second. I have to press the throttle for a good second for it to go down that third to second gear. It's insane. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> Oh, I can't believe it. I, I know there's a lot of emission stuff that Toyota has to, you know, follow and all that good jazz. But if you're doing like so much electronic stuff in the background to make your manual like this, why even offer it? I'm sure someone would be like, oh, save the manuals. But like anyone that's driving this, won't be saying that afterwards. They'll be like, just give me the automatic. <laughs> oh gosh. What I can say though is the four cylinder actually decently powerful and it actually sounds quite cool. You can hear that turbo whistle when you floor it. So at least there's that. The ride on this, the TRD Sport, which give you sport springs, isn't as harsh as you might think a sport suspension should be. So it's actually decently comfortable in here. And even though it is a body on frame vehicle, I don't get that wobbliness that some other truck manufacturers kind of, well, have. This feels sturdy. I'm sure like over time things will loosen up, but right now it actually feels really good. It feels kind of like a unibody truck, kind of like a Ridgeline and say what you want. I mean, for everyday drives, a Ridgeline is better. <laughs> it just is. 
All right, conclusion. The manual, I, I just, I can't suggest it. I, I really can't. It's not the transmission I would suggest. Unless software updates and firmware updates and le like electronically, it just needs to be overhauled. Until that happens, this wouldn't be uh, just the combo I would suggest to really anyone. It's just too harsh. Get the eight speed. I, I'm sure it's gonna be a good truck if you get it with the eight speed. Longevity wise, I don't really have any doubts that Toyota is gonna to put out a good product with the eight speed. I, I know it's not as tested as the old six speed is and I know the four cylinder turbo is new, but it is still a Toyota after all. I mean, their number one fame is reliability. So it should be all right. So yeah, I think that's really it. Get a Tacoma, get the auto, be happier with it than I am right now in this manual. I mean, manual is fun and all, but this, this, just it's it's not good it's just not good <laughs> oh gosh